With me this morning to look at the big takeaways from the Oscars is Daniel Lorian, editor at Box Office Media, also Paul Sweeney, a media analyst at Bloomberg Industries. And look, overall, it seemed like ABC and it, it, it looked like and it seemed like the Oscars played it pretty safe. Uh, no Seth MacFarlane dirty jokes at all on air, and so that must have kept the viewers pretty happy. I mean, would you say it's an all-around success for the network and for the Oscars? Yeah, I think for a ABC, you know, the Oscars is such a big broadcast. It's, it's, it's must-see TV. It's oh-wow TV. It's a big event. You know, right, right after the Super Bowl comes the Oscars, so it's a great event for ABC. Uh, they sell their ads for a lot of money, so it's a moneymaker for ABC. And it's also a great promotional platform for them for all their other shows. So we saw just about every show that's going to be coming up uh, on ABC, we saw some promotion for it last night. Right, and you, Jimmy Kim, Kimmel did a skit, right. obviously, to promote his own show. But, Dan, uh, what happened to the movies now after, after they've won? After they've won, we'll see probably a slight bump in box office, uh, especially internationally. We see that the nominations for a film like 12 Years a Slave really helped the box office outside of the United States. Why the, is that? The film is now, it expanded to more markets. It's a historical drama that's not going to get a big international run. Because of the nominations, it got a big expansion of overseas, and now it's up to $90 million internationally. The U.S. box office here in North America is $50 million, so it's almost twice as much outside of the United States than it is inside. Uh, and in terms of overseas market, I mean, is the biggest one to really, to, to really make money off of is China? It is China, yes, but not too many films can get in. So I think a lot of studios right now are seeing China as a bonus rather than a firm opportunity to make money. And they can't get in because what, the content? There is a quota. There is a okay. quota for imported films. Uh, let's turn to another film that uh, did not win any Oscars, but <laughs> certainly has its fan favorites, Anchorman 2. Uh, the legend continues. Uh, which is actually now being re-released in theaters in an R-rated version. This is really unusual, right, guys? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a way for you know the studio to try to make some incremental revenue off of this movie by re-releasing it in the studios, and this is a strategy that typically was reserved for the DVD window when they would when they released the DVD. There might be some bonus uh, bonus footage. So, so why do this? Well, I think that you know the DVD market has generally been fairly weak. It's been declining. So I think the producers were just thinking this might be a, a different strategy. It is. It's a great opportunity for them to go into the theaters with a similar product and really reconnect with a core audience. The first Anchorman film came out in 2004, yeah. meaning if you were seven years old, you've been growing up with these characters. You need to be 17. 17. You should not be seven years old and watch and watching Anchorman. The first Anchorman. <laughs> well, you only need to be 17 to go in and watch the R-rated cut of Anchorman 2. The right. core audience for the film over the past 10 years, they've grown up with it. They're familiar with the characters, and they can go in and see the little bit racier version that they wanted. 